Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Emmanuel. People of God, Emmanuel. Children of grace, Emmanuel. God is with us. And if God is with us, no one can be against us. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning and win today. Win tomorrow and win forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is time for God's message. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. Jesus Christ, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. Father, it's time for your word. As we hear and obey. Lord God, let your word refresh our mind and your spirit renew our strength. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is good. Shout with our hands together and clap for the ever Lord. You may have your seat. Say to someone, give God your time. Say to somebody, give God your time. Say to your neighbor, give God your time. Say to the viewers, give God your time. And say to yourself, I will give God my time. Say to yourself, I will give God my time. Because if I give God my time, he will take care of me. Time with Jesus Christ is time with joy. Time with Jesus Christ is time with peace. It's time for fulfillment. I pray that that will be your portion today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Man has reasons for doing whatever they do, either good or bad. Man has many reasons for their excuses and the actions they take or they took, whether positive or negative. And because they have reasons, this makes it difficult, very difficult to admit, to take responsibilities for their actions, their wrongdoings, because they have reasons. This makes it difficult to admit take responsibilities for their wrongdoings because they have reasons. And they can prove it. They can prove it. They can talk their way out, out of it. A chain smoker has reasons to be so. A prostitute also have reasons. To be a prostitute. He who kills, steals, and destroys also have reasons for their action. And they can prove this in their own eye. They will tell you their reason for doing so. But I tell you, you are responsible for your action. You are responsible to whatever you give your attention to. In the book of Psalm 51, 1 to the end, the 
psalmist acknowledges his sin. He took responsibilities of his wrongdoing. He said in verse 4, Against you, you, O Lord, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Against you, you, O Lord, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. He acknowledges his sin. And in verse 4, he said, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. What is? This is a perfect reason to remain a sinner. It means he was born into sin by his parents. He inherited it. This is a perfect reason to remain the way he was. It's not my fault. I didn't cause it. I was born into it. David can argue about this. We also can argue about it. I don't know how sin came into my life. It was my parents. But hear him in verse 6. He said, surely you desire truth in the inner part. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. You desire truth in the inner part, even in the womb. You teach me wisdom or taught me wisdom in that secret place. To the ordinary man, who knows it all, we continue to blame the parents forever. I don't know how sin came into my life. It is not my fault that I am the way I am. It is your fault. He up up to his wrongdoings, his weaknesses and limitations so that he can obtain mercy, favor, compassion from God. The ordinary man will continue to blame his or her parents forever. Oh, I couldn't get there because you deprived me. Oh, I wasn't sensitive to people. I am rude. Because you made me to be so. You asked me to do so. It is not my fault. <laughs> people of God. If you make excuses for your sins, your sins will not be excused. Say to someone, if you make excuses for your sin, your sin will not be excused. If you make excuses for your wrongdoings, your wrongdoings will not be excused. And this will bring us to our message today. A deliberate sinner. Let someone say, a deliberate sinner. A deliberate sinner. And our protest shall be taken from the Bible and the book of John. Open your Bible to the book of John. John 5, from verse 1 to 15. And I read. Sometimes later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem, near the sheep gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time. He asked him, do you want to get well? So the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. 
Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once, the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. Then he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Amen. Amen. Corrections makes future possible. Jesus Christ found this man at the temple. The man could not recognize him, but he knew him. He found him at the temple some other days after his healing. The man could not recognize him, but Jesus knew the man. The Bible told us that after their encounter, Jesus slipped into the crowd. And the man has no idea of who he is. But Jesus Christ knows him. Let someone say, Jesus knows me. Say to your neighbor, Jesus knows me. He knows my name. He knows my thoughts. And he hears me when I call. Say, Jesus Christ knows me. He knows my name. He knows my thoughts. And he hears me whenever I call. He knows my every thought. He sees his tears that fall. And he hears me when I call. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Please do have your seat. Yes. Jesus Christ found this man at the temple, a place of worship, not a place where his name will not be glorified. He didn't find him in a marketplace where there is bargaining, people selling and buying. He didn't find him in a clubhouse. Where many give their testimonies. Because it is common for man today. 
They receive in the house of God. They go and give their testimonies at places of their concern. Jesus Christ did not find this man there. He found him in the temple, a place of worship. Yet, he saw it necessary to warn him. Give this warning. See you are well again. Stop sinning. Or something worse may happen to you. See you are blessed again. Stop sinning. Or something worse may happen to you. See you are delivered. You are healed. Stop sinning. Or something worse may happen to you. A deliverer sinner. Who can be said to be a deliverer sinner? Can anyone tell us who a deliverer sinner is or was? We are all Bible students. I need a teacher. Can someone tell us who a deliverer sinner is? I think a sister wants to tell us. Who is a deliverer sinner? Come over, sister. I need a brother too. Over there. Come over, come over, come over. A deliverer sinner. So my sister, who is a deliverer sinner? A deliberate sinner is one who acts or sins consciously. He knew that whatever he's doing is wrong, and yet he does it. Thank you very much. A deliberate sinner is that person who has heard the word, he knows the word, he knows the right thing, he has heard from Jesus, but yet he willfully fall into sin, just like Judas in the Bible. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for teaching us today. Here is our church, the synagogue. So what do we do? What do we do now? You have the privilege to take the other fruits. <laughs> God bless you. Please, please, please take. Thank you very much. Yes, so what is our message? A deliberate sinner. <laughs> so shall we put our hands together and clap for the sister and the brother? Good students of the Bible. I want to give you Prophet T.B. Joshua's definition of who a deliberate sinner is. Which is also mine. Simple. A deliberate sinner is he who knows sin and does them. Say a deliverer sinner. Is he who knows sin and does them? I can hear you. Say it again. Speak louder. A deliberate sinner is he who knows sins and does them. Always making excuses for their wrongdoings, justifying their actions, blaming others for their troubles, circumstances beyond their control. And hear him. I am the way I am because of the environment I was brought up. The society made me so. That is the voice of a chain smoker because he's unwilling to change. Oh, that sickness is as a result of family cuts. Family cuts that could not be broken is ravaging every life in the society. It's ravaging every life in the family. Safety, you are not like them. I could not get there. That sister, that brother over there is far off better than me because I have no one to lay my back upon. There's a godfather somewhere. There's a godmother somewhere. That is why they are there. 
That is envy, jealousy, excuse for failure. Mm -hmm. Prostitution is an old profession. I didn't start it. Blaming their poor family background for their wrong choice, their wrong decisions. A deliberate sin. I want us to look at the Bible in the book of Galatians. Open your Bible to the book of Galatians 5. From verse 19 to 21. The art of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fit of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the lies. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I warn you that those who participate in things like this cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We are talking about a deliverance thing now today. If not trouble, pains, hardship, Man, by his wicked nature, will not have sorted the face of God. A deliberate sinner. I tell you today that there is no physical strength. We don't have the physical strength to contend with Satan. We don't have physical strength to contend with devil and his foes, his agents, but only for us to look to heaven. To look to Christ. The pain on his mercy, his strength and assistance and to lay our soul under his influence and operations. There is no physical strength to contend with Satan. And so, what do we do? Jesus Christ saw this man at the temple and he warned him, stop sinning so that something worse may not happen to you. My brethren, our God is faithful. Our God is good. We just have to give our life to him. We have to give our life to him. In all we do. In every aspect of our lives. Give it to him. And he will hold you. He will see you through in all you do. My lifetime... I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime. I will give God my lifetime. If I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will never, ever let me down. No, 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 no. I will give God my lifetime. My lifetime. Oh, yes, I will give God. I will give God my lifetime. Oh. Give God my life. If I give God 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have your seat. We don't have physical strength to contend with Satan. Only to focus on Christ Jesus. Who is able and able to forgive us all our weaknesses and shortcomings and help us in our weaknesses. You see, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ met this man at the temple, a place of worship. And he saw it important to give the warning. Why? Because they convinced and they converted worship in the house of God. They sit down like we're sitting. They clap their hands like we are clapping. They give praises to God like we are doing until their pride is injured. Remember that when Jesus Christ met this man, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Do you want to get well? It was a simple question. But it started. Oh, I didn't have anyone to help me get into the pool. When the water is dead, that is why I am like this. I don't have anyone for 38 years to help me get there. That is why I am like this. Jesus Christ is asking you the same question today. He said, do you want to get well? Do you want to be free? Yes. Do you want to be delivered? Yes. Do you want to be saved? Yes. He's asking you. He said, do you want to be set free from every trouble that came upon your life before you were born? Jesus is asking you. He said, do you want to make every impossibility possible for your life? He's asking you. He said, do you want every giant that stand between you and God promises to be removed. Yes. Jesus is asking you just like he asked that man that day. Do you want every weapon, every design of the enemies against you to totally fail? It is done. It is done. No hindrances, no excuse, no obstruction. As from today, you can exercise the name Jesus Christ to possess your position. <laughs> we didn't have to go to the pool anymore. You don't have to go to the pool anymore. If there's any hindrances between you and the promises of God from receiving, it is your faith that is holding you back. But you must know that the consciousness of little faith should be the more reason why you should pray the more, fast the more, believe the more, have faith the more. It should be an incentive, something that encourages, something that motivates you. Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? And he responded, I don't have anyone to get me into the pool when the water is dead. Before I get there, someone else goes ahead of me for 38 years. His inability to get healed, he blamed on people. His continuous stay at the pool is people's fault. He never see the sin in his life as a hindrance. Sin is a spiritual battle. It is a spiritual battle, a constant struggle between faith and doubt, good and bad, humility and pride, doubt and faith. When Apostle Paul realizes this, he confessed. When he realizes that he was constantly doing things he does not want to do, Do you want to get well? I have no one to help me. So it is with many of us today. 
So it is with many of us. We keep on apportioning blames, shifting blames on people instead of us to look at Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. He that is able to forgive us all our sins and help us in our weaknesses. Prophet T.B. Joshua says that the best antidote against the poison of sin is to walk in the Spirit. The best antidote against the poison of sin is for you to walk in the Spirit. The way Jesus Christ addresses this man, say you are well again, shows that he might be a deliberate sinner. Even though he found him in the temple, possibly with his friends, he found him there. Yet he saw it necessary to give that warning. You are well again. Because a man's character is not known until his pride is injured. So my brethren, I am encouraging you today. Own up to your wrongdoings. Come to Jesus Christ with repentant spirit. Come to him with repentant spirit. And he will accept you the way you are. He will give you a new life. He will give you a new beginning. Like it does to that man. Sin is a poison to your soul. It is a poison to your spirit. It causes poverty in your life. Sickness in your life. But when it is pardoned, you will be healed. Amen. Jesus gave that warning. Because he knew that those who are healed, those who are saved from the punishment of sin, it's like to go back to sin when the pains are over. All things passed away so soon. And so he gave that warning. See, you are well again. Stop sinning. Or something else may happen to you. Have you ever wondered why an arm robber with different kinds of humiliation as an arm robber whenever he's apprehended, we want to rob again. You know why once a psychiatric patient we want to testify of his healing In a beer parlor with people like him. That is also the reason why a chronic liar who wants to testify against someone in a law court may end up implicating his or herself who wants to lie again. It's the same reason why a young lady who is healed of womb infection, womb disease, we want to take prostitution as the best profession. It is because they have forgotten their past. They have forgotten their past. All things passed away so soon. A deliberate sinner must have a change of heart. Christ is giving the warning to every one of us today. We are healed, we are saved. We are delivered. We are linked up to God by the blood of Jesus Christ. Go and sin no more. Let us go and sin no more. You know, obeying God at first seems difficult. It is very, very difficult to obey God at first because it involves what? A turning point. Against your usual way of doing things. Against the popular will of friends who always want you to be in their fold. If you must resist them, 
you must stand for what you believe. If you must stand for Christ, that is the only way to resist them. You must resist these people by standing on what you believe. That is the word of God. Because if you can't stand for what you believe, you will definitely fail by it. If you can't stand for what you believe, you will fail by it. This time he says, if I have iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If there is sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What does it mean to have sin in you? It is when you have some level of respect for sin. You have respect for sin. Like many will say, oh, it doesn't matter. I can take a sip of this. It's just one. I can take a stick of this. It's just one. Yes, I can go with my friends to some place, even though they know it is not right. I'm only going there to sit down and watch. People who argue in this way, they do so. Not from the sense of right or wrong, but because they have the desire. They have pleasure in sin. And I pray that God will renew us. God will renew our mind. He will renew our spirit, our body, for his glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I leave you all in faith, and I hope to meet you in faith again in Jesus' name.